Welcome to the Ron Russell Show. Set the record straight. Conversations with movie stars of Hollywood's golden years. You will be amazed at what they say, secrets, and the scandals you always wanted to know about. Stay tuned, or you'll be sorry. Everybody. Welcome back to the Ron Russell Show. Today's show is a really special show. Back in 1944, Betty Davis made a movie called Beyond the Forest. She played a terrible lady who shot animals, but actually shot a man. One of the fellas who witnessed her murdering this man said to her, you know something, Rosa Moline, you're for the birds. Well, that catch caught on. And where I come from in Brooklyn, we'd say, ah, she's for the birds, he's for the birds. That movie was for the birds. Then in 1964, all of that changed. You know why? Well, I'll tell you why. When you said, she's for the birds, you are talking about one of the most beautiful, glamorous, talented Hollywood stars, Miss Tippi Hedren. She certainly is for the birds. around yeah that's because the birds yeah. like you you have a strange way of attracting birds well not only that but they're meat eaters. take that look at that aren't they beautiful yeah yeah they're really they, it, it's uh... now if they start to multiply we're out of here she is so water. beautiful I'm really having difficulty doing this interview I look at her and I look at those eyes and I say oh my god is she a beauty I mean, you're over 50 by about a week or two. Oh, at least. And why Hollywood yes. is not screaming for you to be on film again is beyond me. We've really got to stop this nonsense with 50, it's over. Anyway, we're going to go see some more cats. That's well, what we're I, here for. I, I used to be Natalie K. Hedren. I know that. And your so. dad, in Swedish, had a nickname for you, Tupsa. which was a dialect. And it was Tupsa, Tupsa. which became Tippy. Yes. See, I see? do, I do my research. And she's from Minnesota, like Arlene Dahl, like Tip, yes. like Terry Moore, like the like everybody on my show so They're far. Lonnie Anderson. Lonnie, yeah. all the great blonde Lonnie, beauties. Lonnie was here just a couple of weeks ago. The Damn lion young. Over there. Yes, that one you I want to make out with. That's the lion I want to go <laughs> over and kiss on the lips. Okay. That's my idea of yeah, the most. Yeah, you can do that once. The most <laughs> once. <laughs> That's what I call the most magnificent creature on the planet Earth. And he lives with two ladies. Well, I, why not? He lives with Zoe and um, and Kosa. He's gorgeous. K Kosa. Oh, there's another is, one here. This is a little quiet pussy cat. <gasps> this is his wife or his girlfriend? Oh, this is Kosa. Which one is that? Number one wife or number? Two? She's very much the boss. But does she have kittens? No, no, no. But there's no. They don't call them kittens, no do they? Breeding here. Do they call? No, they call them cubs. Cubs. And yes. Kittens. <laughs> Well, I came from the city, New York. We don't have... But you know, it's amazing that a, a, an animal that size 
Uh, when the cubs are born, they're like cute, two pounds. Two pounds. But so cute. Oh, boy. You don't want to give them up, let them grow No, up. that's the big reason that it's mm. such a problem, you know, because people see these animals cute. and they say, oh, I could, I could, I want one. I want one in my house. And by the time they're seven months old, they've torn your house apart. And so what do they do with them? probably taking a pretty good chunk out of you by that time. But what do they do with these And then people? they have to find another place for them. Like such as putting such them down? Such as Shambhala. How about putting them down? Well, uh, that happens. Uh, they could also go to a roadside zoo. They could go to, um, uh, you know, one of the one of the canned hunts, which is terrible. I can't know. believe what I'm hearing. No, oh. I can't believe this. Oh, now the yes. government doesn't subsidize you or help you or no, give you money for food. No, and interestingly enough, our government sends these animals to sanctuaries like Shambhala. Right. And um, uh, our state fish and game will t uh, ask us to take animals. Uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture will ask us to take animals. The SPCAs, the, uh, the Humane Society. And they don't give anything. Uh, you know what? Over all of these years, since we've uh, been taking these animals in, which is about 1971, something like that, mm. um, I could count on my one hand people that have made a one-time donation. And they call it, I want to donate this animal to you. Well, and people I like say, you know, what do you mean, donate this animal to me? You donate it, and then, and then the Roar Foundation pays for him or her for the rest of their lives. Now that is what we do, but it's because we are a very necessary facility. What does it cost? If I, I, it's probably a figure you don't, you haven't got in your head. Oh, I do. Okay, what does it cost to feed your animals well, a year? To to, to just feed them like they meat, well, they must eat a lot of meat. Do, yeah, uh, well, we serve about 600 pounds a day between oh five and 600, 600 pounds. pounds a day. That's got to yes. cost a fortune. Patrick will eat 20 to 30 pounds. That's a fortune. Yeah. Holy oh, it smoke. is a fortune. You bet it is. And uh, you know, they they all eat. Yeah, the, the, the 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 males will eat about 15 pounds. And the female big cats will eat about ten. Now, what about and what about the veterinarian? If they're sick, if they need medication, if 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 whatever, who pays for that? You? We do, we do. And you pay um, for the taxes on this property? Uh, well, we're a nonprofit, so there is no tax. Okay, that's one thing I good. Turned, uh, Thank you. I turned all of the property over to the Roar Foundation about thirteen years ago. Okay. And so we don't have to pay taxes, but which is a blessing. Uh, and I also, you know, I donated the whole property to uh, the Roar Foundation. I mean, so I look the at these. Would always be safe. I look at yeah, I look at these animals, and I just think, if it weren't for you, they'd be dead. And well, I wouldn't, man, and or, I wouldn't or, be enjoying what I'm enjoying. Yeah. I mean, it's such a pleasure. Be, or they'd be treated so poorly. We hear about um, animals that are living in some at some gas station in a little tiny. You mean a lion? Cage, a lion, tiger, a lot of tigers. There's more tigers living in the state of Texas in people's backyards than exist in the country of India. The number as being somewhere between four and 5,000 tigers living in, in Texas. Do you know how many there are in India? I haven't in got a wild? clue. 1,400. I only saw two in the Central Park Zoo when I was a kid. Now, a lot of these breeders, you know, who are breeding simply to be uh, for, uh, you know, they're selling them for personal but is it possession. Is it legal to sell? In many, in many states, But yes. it's an animal that's a dangerous animal. It is a dangerous animal and should not be. In Why fact, would Texas want them in their backyard? Uh, because they can. But what's the kick? Shoot them, hunt them, love them? Um, they can't kiss or touch them? Well they, can, well, they do, and many of them are hurt. There's a tremendous number well, of people who I think Texas better do something about it. And if you well, ever get my show, Texas, I hope you're treating those cats good or we're going to come and get you. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm working on a bill in Washington right now. Yeah, uh, tell me to, about it. To stop the breeding of the exotic feline. And that means lions, tigers, leopards, uh, cheetah, um, uh, serval, bobcat, lynx. Every uh, cat. Yeah, what else are we? Leopards? Uh, I think white, snow white, them, snow white leopards. That, that would be included in this. Spot I think there's like four leopard. of them left in the world, isn't it? Something oh, like it's that? just awful. It's, it's there's about four, four shape. white, what, are they called white snow white leopards? What are they called the white Snow ones? leopards. Snow leopards. Mm -hmm. I, I think I saw on TV something like four. And that, that's an endangered species. Very much so. Well, I think that everybody should sort of help Tippy out. Uh, I know Ron Russell will, and he'll be very happy if you will. 
Um, well, that would be wonderful. It's a big, it's, big endeavor that she yeah, has here. You know, it's a right big job. now we, it uh, costs us seventy-five thousand a month, every month, uh, just to keep everything going. It's a lot. You know, and it is a lot. It's a, a tremendous amount. And, and people say, just, "Oh, that isn't so bad." I said, "Okay, you go try and raise no, it's it a every lot of single money. month." It yeah, can. Well, so that amortizes out to about a million a year. I mean, and, do people like Michael Jackson when he was around donate lots of money? Not at all. In fact, we we uh, accepted two of his tigers. Took when two of his closed, tigers and he never gave you a penny. Nothing. How about all these, you know, dot com people that have made billions of dollars? Don't they come forward? Um, well, uh, not yet. Funny question. Has Doris Day ever sent a buck? No, but she's got her own. Yeah, she does know, her she dog does thing. Her I, I help her. Yeah, I love Doris yeah. with her dogs. Oh, I do too. And her doggy well, hotels. It's funny. Three of the Hitchcock women are involved with animals. That's right, Kim Doris Novak. And Kim. That's and, right. And I. And you. I mean, very extensively. That's right. That's right. Not just, you know, a couple of. Well, we'll talk dogs. about Hitch in Hollywood later on when we go inside. But now, if you could show me some more of your cats, I would be very happy. That's very important because we, we tend to start doing an interview right here. We did. We well, did. Well, well, yeah, but I mean, yes. this, this is great this is because good. I want our audience to feel the, the ambiance, the feeling of what it is that you've created. This is all to, due to Tippi Hedren. If she didn't do it, it wouldn't be here and these cats wouldn't be here. So all of you out there who are enjoying watching these cats, this is the one to thank. Not me. I just brought it to you. She built it. Let's go look at more cats. Okay, I just want to tell you where Patrick was living. Patrick took Patrick, off. I think he went off with this guy's went, wife. I think they're having an affair. He likes her a lot. Oh, I could tell. See, that yeah. cat's a smart uh, aleck. Patrick was living in a place in, um, in Illinois. Right. Deer Park, Illinois. And he was in such a small cage that he could only take three don't steps one this. way. I, want to hear I have to tell you. No, I don't want to hear Three it. steps one way, three I steps I could scream. And he went under because of a lot of reasons. Oh. When Patrick came here uh, and the veterinarian checked him out while he was in, um, um, uh, up in, uh, what do you call it? Illinois? No, when he came here. And he was in quarantine. Oh, right. And they, that's when they were first checked out. And had everything wrong with him known to man? No, not not so much that, but he was in such close quarters that his high, his hind legs were losing muscle tone, Muscles. and he would have been crippled. Oh. Yeah. Don't people have hearts? I, mean, I, I, I have a dog. I think they have uh, they have not looked into the animal that they're dealing with. They have obviously don't know that this tiger, this lion, is going to grow up from being, you know, you can this feed adorable it with a bottle thing, right? This little take cuddly, a little nap sweet with thing. Mm -hmm. right. They don't understand that this animal is going yeah. to be four to five hundred pounds, if not more, with uh, teeth that are huge, with claws that mm -hmm. are so strong um, that you you can't you you will never be on an equal with them. There. I would kiss this cat for hours. I oh, would, she would love that. Oh, I would make out with her for yeah, hours. I just that. adore their little nose. Scooby's got a big face like that. You gotta come. Next time you come to Palm Springs, call me. Come over okay. for dinner. You'll meet Scooby. I go to meet uh, Cheetah. Rivera? No. Oh, oh, the, oh, the monkey. There. Cheetah the, mon the monkey. Oh, I thought you meant Rivera. Oh, I know Cheetah Rivera. <laughs> I, wish I know her too. They're happy beasts. <laughs> Cute little wagon. Oh, I want somebody to this fix is, that. This is how I got to California, by the way, when I was young. <laughs> this was my wagon. We're going to go see some more cats. If anybody wants to fix our wagon, I would love that. I, it's not a priority for us on a financial status. And I remember when I was little, my mother used to yell at me, I'm going to fix your wagon when I get you. <laughs> Too bad my mother wasn't alive. She could have fixed the damn thing. I want somebody to fix my wagon. <laughs> Look at this guy! Would you get That's you? A lady. Ah, a le That's well, a lady. I couldn't tell her. She's furry. Oops. Anyway, look at you, you show off. <laughs> you know you're on television. She's so well, she Simba? I or think Mona? I, we have, you're upside down like that and you can't you're tell. sleeping over there. Look I at that show Simba. off. Julia, is this Simba on the on the on look. The, it's Mona. Mona. Okay. Um, she found the secret anyway, to becoming a Hollywood star. I want you star. to listen. Yeah, oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> now I want you to listen to me. True. Mona and Zoe uh, were um, born at a place just outside of Colton, California. Now, California has good laws, but they're only as good as they're enforced. Right. And this man named John Weinhardt had 90 big cats that he couldn't afford to feed. 
He'd throw roadkill in every now and then, but he couldn't afford it. Uh, I went out there with our photographer, Bill Dow, um, one day. And first of all, you could smell the place before you, you saw it even. So they weren't taking good care? No, they weren't. And we walked in and there was, um, he looked like he had put a bunch of cages in a, in a dump, a trash dump. And um, uh, the inside the cages that was horribly dirty, filthy with feces and dead chickens and uh, green with mold. And uh, they, they were, he was giving water in the tops of trash cans. Oh, you know, the, the, lids. the top, the lids. the lids, yes, and all of them were bore, bone dry, so we oh. ran around with hoses filling them up, and I left in, in tears, and, um, I just sound so violent to everybody, that's okay, but when it comes to animals, I get nuts, uh, when I got back to the preserve here, I called our, our, uh, investigator from the Department of Agriculture, good for you, good and I for said, you. why are you allowing this good. to happen, good, good, and she said, there aren't enough inspectors, one more reason not to have these animals. As Hello as out there. Birds. Hello out there. Yeah. Did you hear what she said? We need inspectors. Write your congressman. Write your mayor. Write everybody. Uh, so anyway, uh, three years later, I get a call from California Fish and Game, and they said, Tippy, can you take 13 or 14 tigers? I said, Whoa. Well, no, I can't. I said, what's going on? And he said, we closed down uh, John Weinhardt, because who had you. the audacity to call it Tiger Rescue. I because mean, of you, because of you making the complaint. Oh, I, I don't know. Oh, absolutely. You it. made I the. Think, she made well, the complaint. They closed this yeah, creep. Well, I think creep a, is what a he lot is of down. People complain. Anyway, I said I'll call you back, and I said we could take three tigers, and we ended up taking um, eight of those animals. Um, Can I interrupt you? This is very beautiful. You should get a close up of this. It's all the cats, and it has Shambhala. Can this be purchased somehow online yeah, or something? Yeah, right at our own boutique. No, but if somebody lived in New York, could they buy it online? Yes. And you ship? Sh Shambhala.org. S-H-A-M-B-A-L-A.org. You have to see this piece. If you're an animal lover and you don't own one, you're not an animal lover. It is absolutely gorgeous. There are two elephants on the top, one elephant on the top, lions and tigers and, and everything, and it says the Raw Foundation. Beautiful piece of That's jewelry. That's the financial support arm for the Shambhala And this Preserve. comes with it, the beautiful necklace? It does not. No, I didn't think so, because that's a lot of bucks. And but it's, it's also a pin. You can wear it as a pin. I think it's beautiful. Well. Thank you. Buy one. So let me go on with my story. Sure, well, I have to do my little pitch. I'm of course a New Yorker. We like you. to sell. New Yorkers like to sell. It's in our blood. Well, that, that's why you're here. That's why we're here, because <laughs> I have a big mouth. But they love me anyway, right? My big mouth. <laughs> okay, the first, I the, love first her. Three, the first three tigers came in with a skin disease that was so oh, terrible. Oh, get out of here with these stories. <laughs> I, no, no, no. I don't want to hear it. I want you to listen. I get very upset. Yeah, and I'm not they, had to be, they had to be in quarantine uh, at least two weeks longer than the 30 days. With skin disease? Because, yes. Because like it, sores and pus. They lost all their beautiful all hair. All their fur. Yeah, they lost And they were down fur. to like skin, no fur, just bones. But the stripes were still there. The stripes are on the skin. Why is it that we, the public, are not aware of all of the things that Tippy is saying? This should be taught in schools. Back to our lesson for yes, you. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, the, two, the two of these tigers uh, were hidden in the, in the um, um, bathroom ceiling. Oh, the wait a minute. This is, getting, game, this is getting bizarre. Fish and Game went into John Weinhardt's house. And I'm, they went through the house. <laughs> they found two Cayman alligators in the bathtub. They had a little boy, a little boy, a human. Oh, these are nuts. Yeah. So they heard while they were in the bathroom looking at the cave, wondering what to do with the Cayman alligators, they heard a little scratching up in the ceiling. They took the vent down, and a little tiger cub fell <sighs> out and died. He, you know, he was Aww. so young. He was on, under two weeks old. They found 17 tiger and leopard cubs that, that John Weinhart was trying to hide. Well, for you, you rich know. people out there, you know, you can part with a couple of your bucks. Remember, you okay. can't take it with you. I have another, another. Watch me. That's okay. Pull on me. I love it. I love it. Do it. Beat me. Smack me. Do whatever you want. I don't okay. care. I'm yours. I'm <laughs> yours. To me. I'm yours. That's it. The other tigress in here. Uh, was going to a um, man who was dealing drugs, not oh, more too far from here. Yeah, okay. and we find that many of the many of the um, um, drug lords 
have these animals as uh, to just keep the walking cops around. away. And you know, they, they, they it, it does stop the authorities from going in if they know that there's a, a lion or a tiger there. But they might yeah. shoot the animal to get to the drug dealer. Well, that's. And, and then the lion the is dead. Deal, the drug dealers don't care about that. I know, I know, but I do, and you do. So if the police, yes. we have to, police officers watching. I'm doing like a whole documentary here. Police officers that are watching. If a drug dealer has a wild beast in his yard, don't shoot the beast. Shoot the drug dealer. On, let's go on to happy animals. Do we have any like clowny animals? You know, silly. Well, they can all be clowns at some. Do we have any gay lions? Yes. <laughs> we have a gay. <laughs> there's a gay lion here. We have to find a, a mate for the gay lion. Okay. Look, that cat's, listen, that one's a profile. She, the, uh, there's a tiger in back of my house that she's listening to. Oh. These, these <clears throat> animals are really quite lazy. They have the capacity to, in a split second, get up and run as fa faster than you yeah, can Yeah, how fast can imagine. that cat go? 60, 70 miles an hour? Uh, no, the cheetah can. Cheetah can. But, so they, these, are, these, these have to be long distance runners when they go after their food. So in other words, we, we, we could not outrun one if it was no, in chase of cannot. us. No, you cannot. You cannot. No way they we would ever so outrun it. incredibly fast. And powerful. And powerful. You don't have a chance. This is the part of the show that you all love, set the record straight. I'm going to ask Tippi Hedren, a very, very well sort of talked about question. It's been written in many magazines that Tippi Hedren, after making Marnie, was not a very good actress and was not offered any parts. What does the typing mean, Marnie? Why does it make you cry? It means they, they want in. Them in the white suits. Mama comes and gets me out of bed. I don't like to get out of bed. Tippi Hedren, on the other hand, has said in many publications that Alfred Hitchcock was sort of like a dirty old man and hitting on her constantly and driving her crazy. And she, in turn, said to him something like, oh, you fat old blah, 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 get off my back. <laughs> and he then said to her, your career is over, because she was under contract. And she was hot then. She could have gotten a lot of movies. And he didn't let her make any films. No. Now we'll set the record straight. straight. You do it, girlfriend. Yes. It's your thing. OK. Um, you said so, so many things there. Well, it's all uh, the stuff I read. Yeah, that, well, you're, that you're a lousy actor, she got bad reviews. Well, now, see, I can't be my own critic. Well, she, I won, think... she won a Golden Globe for... Yes, I did. Yeah, so yes, I don't think I that's did. a lousy actress, to yeah. be quite honest. And if you saw Marnie and the Birds, she did a great job. So we I know think, that that's bullshit below Yeah, it. I think my work speaks for, for, for itself. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's go and into And any Hitch. of those, those, those um, critics who panned Marnie, I mean, there was a lot of reasons. They didn't like the backdrops. They didn't, you right, know. They said I you mean, were, that you overacted. You can read a review of it now by those very same critics, and it's like they're talking about a different movie. Okay, did, you did, know, this, the, the, did, did Hitch <laughs> talk dirty to you? Dirty to me. Uh, Did he make filthy advances and sexual things and all kinds of stuff? No, he was very controlling. He right. was extremely controlling. Well, he had a and disrespect for women. Yeah. That's obvious. Yes. Every film that he ever made, he yes, did, took absolutely. him all back out of a balcony. and uh, Only Grace, only Grace Kelly wound up. Birds at me. And, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, it was anyway. anyway. So I really think that's what, what, why he chose an unknown to do the birds because no, no actress in her right mind would have done that. Movie. Oh, you're crazy because that's a classic. It is crazy. Oh, that's oh, but a it's classic. wonderful. I am so, I am so fortunate. I watch that film every time it comes on. Rod mm -hmm. Taylor did a wonderful job. Jessica uh, Tandy. Oh, his, she. I have I, to tell you a story. Love her. Love I her. To, I have to tell you a story that that I'm. Um, you know the uh, the scene where I bring the tea. Yes. To to Jessica. And, um, you know, I, we talk about the, you know, how, what awful things she's just witnessed mm -hmm. and will her daughter be okay and all those kinds of things. Well, Hitch wanted me to play that scene very bitchy. So I said, great, you know, bitchy is fun to play. So I was very bitchy. And uh, Jessica and Hitch watched in, once it had been assembled, they watched the scene together. I don't know why I wasn't there, because I usually was. Um, 
and at the end of it, it for she, the dailies. Yeah, she looked at Hitch and she said, nobody's going to like that girl. Now, the, the, the set had been struck and stored and we were on to other things and he brought back the set. So you have the same set, you have the same dialogue, the same actors, the same everything. And I played it with a much more sympathetic kind of mm -hmm. uh, person. And you know what it, that did for me? Was show me what you can do oh, as an actress, how different you can make a scene. It was absolutely one of the best.